as an asset. So I'm going to say uh, existing contact. Let's put, let's just copy the name. Where's the name? Office Depot. I can copy it from here. Copy that. Boom. Office Depot. And I'll say under a thousand. Well, no, let's just call it Office Depot. What are you doing? That's okay. There's our, our new vendor. And then we're going to say down here that this needs to go to uh, supplies, supplies. And then I'm not doing the location thing. Well, <laughs> that was our new location field we, we played with last time. Uh, we won't, but you could assign it to a location because we added that here. And then reference, I'm going to say it applies to all the uh, accounts. And the name of the rule, Office Depot under $1,000. All right, so there it is. Let's go ahead and save it. And then, th now this might be the only rule that you apply, right? Because I can go into here and say, okay, this one's good, under 1,000, no problem. And this one is good, it's under 1,000. Let's pull that one in. This one, Office Depot, didn't apply the rule because it's over $1,000, right? So so it apply, so it didn't apply that rule there. That's what we want. Now you could leave it like that. You could just say, well, if it's over $1,000, then I'm gonna decide whether or not I wanna put it on the books as supplies or as equipment of some other equipment account because I might then have to decide if I need to put it into equipment or tools or you know, whatever a category, but usually it would be equipment. Or what we will do shortly is make another rule that will say if it's over a thousand dollars you want to put it into the fixed asset all right so i'm going to go to the tab let's go and see what we've done so far before we do that update the balance sheet so checking accounts going down so that's no i'm not i don't even need to look at it because we've done that we see we that's that's uh whatever and we go to the income statement and in supplies we recorded the supplies according to the rule straightforward except that we had that dollar limit restricting uh the other stuff so there's these pulling in movie b to the end spend money for them be in so it looks good let's go to the first tab again and now let's create the other rule saying hey look if it's from office depot and over a thousand put it into equipment not supplies so we're going to hit the drop down but not too hard just tap the drop down create a bank rule and let's make another one and we want all conditions so all the conditions must be met one any text the, the normal part of the rule if it contains office depot that's one bit but we have another whole piece whole component down here you also have to this has to happen as well or else you can't do it don't do the rule zero so it has to be uh, greater than a thousand dollars so there we have it. So now we have one rule under a thousand, one greater than a thousand. Now you might be saying, well, what if I had a bill for exactly a thousand dollars? Well, then the, t you know, the two rules might not catch it and you'd have to put it, but you could make a third rule that said uh, it was equal to a thousand dollars if you really want to, but you'd probably be pretty safe with just the two rules. You can make it even more precise. You could put pennies on it so that, you know, it would be down to the penny instead of to the dollar and you'd only have if it was, you know, or whatever. So, but we'll keep it like that. I think we'll be okay. So then I'm going to also say this is uh, Office Depot, same vendor. And then this is going to be equipment and okay. And then I'm going to say reference all accounts and then Office Depot over $1,000. Let's go ahead and save it and check that out. So now it's applying this rule here. So it applied it there. Now it's picking that up. Boom. Shakalaka. Here's this under rule. Here's the over rule. And, uh, and here's the under rule. All right. Let's go to the balance sheet and see what happens. K Paso. K in the world Paso over here k for the love of deals paso all right so then we're gonna say that uh the checking account went down and the equipment account went up 
So if I go into the equipment account, uh, we can see then we had the change happening. It's happening here. So uh, Office Depot there for the over, if it's over a thousand. And then, and then on the other side, if it, all the stuff that was under went to, of course, once again, the supplies account. Let's update it. Supplies. All right. And so if I go to the first tab, we can check out those rules. If we want to modify the rules, by the way, I can go to the accounting drop down, bank accounts, and we can check out all these rules that we've been making, all these super cool rules. You know, I used to not like rules, but when I'm making the rules, then they're excellent. I make good rules. Other people don't make good rules. That's the problem. People make the rules that I have to follow. They don't know what they're doing. But when I'm making the rules, then, then the rules are perfect. So if it's Office Depot under a thousand, Office Depot over, if you, if you needed to edit this thing, then you go into it and you can make your modifications uh, over here. So there we have that. So that looks good. Now, just a quick note that if I go to the balance sheet, uh, we have the items in the equipment. You might be asking, well, when are we going to expense these items? We're going to expense them in the form of depreciation. And that will typically happen in the United States. You might want to track that again with a separate schedule with the tax depreciation schedules because you're going to have to add it to the tax depreciation anyways. And, and then you can get the depreciation schedules from there, either on a tax basis, if you want to run your books on the tax basis to match the tax code, or you can have it do it on a, on a, on a book basis, uh, possibly most, a lot of software can do that. And then we would do periodic adjustments, possibly at the end of the month, possibly at the end of the year, which usually you have another account, which would be uh, credit to, a, to, you know, accumulated depreciation for the equipment. And once we start adding those separate accounts for equipment, automobile and stuff, Zero has this really nice editing layout item down here that allows us to group, for example, the equipment account to the related accumulated depreciation. We can put the uh, equipment on top, even though the, the, the alphabetical order would be reversed. So really nice flexibility to customize our statement more so, I think, than other software like uh, QuickBooks Online with sorting out uh, the equipment. So that's how that would generally work.